team sport athletes are often required to complete their sport-specific skills alongside repeated maximal or near-maximal efforts involving jumping, accelerating, decelerating, sprinting and changing direction that are interspersed with brief recovery periods. To improve the ability to perform these tasks, warm-ups are often implemented within one hour of competition, which aims to increase muscle and core temperature, neuromuscular activation and increase blood flow to the muscles. However, an additional window of opportunity 1 to 12 hours prior to the start of competition also exists, whereby priming exercises such as resistance training, running and cycling can be implemented with the goal to further improve physical performance, with improvements possibly due to a favourable hormonal response following exercise. Therefore, the article published in the journal Sports Medicine titled The Use of Acute Exercise Interventions as Game Day Priming Strategies to Improve Physical Performance and Athlete Readiness in Team Sport Athletes by Billy Mason and colleagues systematically reviewed 29 randomised controlled studies that had examined the acute effect of exercise interventions 1 to 12 hours prior to the assessment of performance measures and in doing so they provide recommendations to optimise game day priming strategies in team sport athletes. This presentation brought to you by Talking Sports Science will provide a summary of their findings and recommendations. The reviewed studies highlight that specific movement patterns performed under load appear to be more effective at improving subsequent performance of similar movements compared to general non-specific exercise. In addition, multiple priming exercise interventions can be used to enhance physical performance and athlete readiness. However, resistance training, cycling and running were the most frequently used priming strategies and so will now be the focus. Resistance training was the most popular and appears to be influenced by exercise selection, volume, intensity and recovery time. In terms of exercise selection, compound movements, i.e. squats and power cleans, are recommended over isolated movements, i.e. leg extensions, as they appear to provide a greater priming response with less fatiguing effects. This may be due to the physiological stress imparted on the overall system as opposed to specific musculature. Low volume and moderate to high intensity resistance training had the greatest effect on strength, power and speed performance. Therefore, team sport athletes needing these physical qualities may benefit from performing three sets of three to four repetitions using heavy loads, i.e. above 80% one repetition maximum, perform four to six hours prior to competition. However, consideration must be given to the overall volume when implementing resistance training priming strategies, as increased repetitions led to decreased performance and required extended recovery times, which may impact on the practicality of resistance training as a priming strategy on the day of competition. Moving on to cycling, cycling may be an appealing priming strategy for athletes and coaches aiming to reduce load through the lower body in preparation for competition. However, due to the lack of specificity, i.e. muscle contraction, for team sport athletes, running-based strategies are recommended. This is based on an increase in the physiological response and positive performance outcomes following running compared to cycling. Regarding the intensity and duration of running-based priming strategies for team sport athletes, all-out sprints of less than 30 seconds are recommended, as sprint-based priming strategies have been shown to improve sprint times and repeat sprintability five to six hours later. 
whereas no improvements have been observed in performance or physiological markers at any time point following completion of endurance exercise. Further benefits of sprint-based priming interventions for team sport athletes is the ability to implement with minimal resources and the reduced time required to implement compared to endurance priming strategies. And that concludes the recommendations. As is often the case, more research is needed in the area of priming to determine whether combinations of exercise modalities, intensities and recovery periods may lead to different performance benefits for team sport athletes on the day of competition. I recommend you check out the full article, the link is in the description. Thanks for listening folks, see you next time.